to On The Spot. I'm your host, Rich Gallup. We have a great show for you today, Jeff Gersman. That's right, we do, Rich Gallup. We do. GDC is going on right now down in San Jose, California. Yeah. We're 50 miles south of us. That's the Game Developers Conference. That is what GDC stands yeah. for. And there's all kinds of craziness going on associated with that. Yeah, there's been, I mean, it's, it seems like most of it's coming out of the keynote addresses, but there's some stuff. You know, Speed Tree is there talking about their fascinating tree-making technology. Okay. But on top of that, you know, Nintendo's there saying some pretty crazy stuff. Somebody's got some crazy stuff. Did you say Speed Tree? Speed Tree, Ryan Davis. Welcome fast, to the set, fast, sir. fast foliage? Is that what we're talking All about? I don't know what that even trees. means. It makes trees fast. Yeah. If you're That's making crazy. a game that needs trees... Speed tree, apparently. There's, yeah. there's all sorts of crazy stuff like that happening at GDC right now. We've got a whole team down there. We're actually going to be looking at some of that a little bit later in the show. We're also going to be giving away uh, three copies of Capcom's Classic Collection Remix for the PSP. We sure are, Ryan Davis. Uh, we're going to be looking at crazy DS games that uh, it's the Japanese take on American football. We're letting Ryan Davis be a disembodied voice today, by the way. That's awesome. cool. Yeah, we, that, that's, that's how we roll around here. But we do, we do have all kinds of... We are giving away some games. We do have some great reports straight from the show floor. Carrie's down there. But the big thing that happened... Uh -huh. Oh, wait, wait, also, Brian Eckberg's coming in with a crazy DS game. Do you remember yeah, that? the crazy anime I football 21. action. I, yes, I Shield 21. I'm so gonna, obviously, it's a football game. I, I didn't see this game until maybe about 20 minutes ago. Uh -huh. It looks... I'm, I think I'm going to have to go buy it. Yeah. It, yeah. it looks real it's, crazy. It's football done right on the Nintendo DS. Totally. Basically. So, yeah, and, and Brian's going to come on, and we're also going to talk about the new Sweet, Sweet 16 feature that's going up today. Right. And world premiere trailer, I think Ryan Davis said, 2006 FIFA World Cup. I didn't, but oh, thank yeah, you. I, I said well, yeah, you said it. It's been said. That's now. not like the only trailer. We've no, done, it right? isn't, because there's an amazing trailer that just hit the site just a few, like maybe an hour or so ago. Right. It's for the new uh, Zelda game for the DS, Phantom Hourglass. The, that's the scariest of all hourglasses. It is. It's uh, yeah. It's not the Phantom. No, it's no. Phantom Hourglass. It's, a, it's not an hourglass uh, not, that lets you download because then it would be games the Legend of Zelda, the Phantom Hourglass. That would just sound weird. Yeah. Well, I'm saying no. The oh, the Phantom. Phantom. The Phantom. No, no, but this game will come with a lap board. Okay. So that's the difference. <laughs> yeah. well, we do have a trailer for you. You can find it on the site, or you can watch it right now. <gasps> And we are back. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm here with uh, Brad Shoemaker. Brad, how are you doing? Good. You have an incredible morsel here with you. I have a tiny DS. You have the DS Lite. That's if we actually show it over to this camera right so here. Little. Look how little there it is. is. The DS Lite. This is fresh from Japan. Yeah, these are incredibly hard to get right now. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, it came out, well, this color, the white color, came out first in Japan about two weeks ago, maybe three. And then they chased it a week later with two more colors, uh, different shades of blue. Um, it's, it's the DS Lite. It's basically just a DS, way smaller. Screens look way better, as you can surely tell. So um, let's, let's just do a little side-by-side -side comparison here on the camera. There we are. burning into my retinas. Look at, look at yeah. how much, not only brighter, but also how much smaller. I'm, I'm just going to just, yeah, look yeah, at that. It's, it's tiny in comparison. Yeah. We're going to hold it sideways here. The screens will definitely sear your eyeballs. The, the breadth is. Now, now the original DS, this, this big hunking thing right here, it only you could either turn the 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 backlighting off or have it on and that was right, it. Right. Now this has three different settings for the backlight. Uh, I you, believe I believe it's four actually. Four different. Me, uh, me, so uh, it's get out of here and uh, so there there it is. Drop at its, back to the menu at its darkest. As, as you can see, when it boots up, it's just a DS. You know, the software basically seems to be the same. Okay. This is actually a Japanese unit, but just like the regular DS, you can put it in English. Um, 
it's got uh, it's got a new little option here at this boot up screen where you can just set the brightness levels and obviously you know it's useful for saving your battery life but who's not going to want to run it like this now can you actually do any of that on the fly in games or uh, is that something you can only do from the as far, uh, the as, far as i know you can only do that here okay but you know you just pick what what your light level is appropriate for and off you go. So very cool. Now we don't have a U.S. release date for this thing just no, yet. No, that, that's the big question about this thing. Everybody wants to know when it's coming out. Here. Nintendo hasn't said anything yet. Right. We don't know. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's worth pointing out that you can just import it and it'll play all your American games okay. if if you can find one. That's the big thing because this thing flew off the shelves in Japan. It actually both release dates. All the units sold out before the stores opened to sell. Them. So now there's, there's some other small minor uh, differences between this and the, yeah. the regular DS that that uh, that we might want to mention. One being yeah. obviously you know form factor. Yeah. Compare mm -hmm. these two bad boys here. Uh, that's a whole lot smaller than this one is. Also odd things like the stylus yeah. on that is stylus. way bigger, and it's also coming out of the side. Comes out of the side. It's a lot fatter. It's a lot fatter. It's a lot taller. Yeah. It's got a little more of a pronounced tip. Uh, now yeah, the, the going or the the like the MSRP for this thing in uh, Japan is like sixteen thousand eight hundred yen. Yeah, which is roughly one hundred and forty dollars. It's roughly one hundred forty dollars, but you can't find one at those if, prices. If you want a DS Lite, you're going to pay a lot more than one hundred and forty dollars. Uh, they're going for two hundred dollars. I've seen them as high as like three online. So these things are heavily in demand in Japan right now. Uh, so you're definitely going to pay through the nose if you want one. Uh, Tony here, uh, who is watching the show right now, wants to know, is the DS Lite sexy? It is incredibly sexy. I think like, we I mean, can say it is can, super sexy. I don't, I don't know if you can see how glossy it is. It, has this, it does have this really nice kind of so iPod exactly, exactly. polish like to very it. Very slick. I mean, that means it fingerprints up real good, but you, know, you can just <laughs> kind of wipe it right off and you're good to go. Um, yeah, a very, very slick device. They, it, it feels a lot more solid. It's a lot more kind of heavy. It's got more heft to it than that. You know, the old DS feels kind of hollow in this one's. Now, another cool thing is uh, battery life. I've been told that yeah. the battery life is, ex is way, it's, way longer. Yeah, incredibly, considering the screens are that much better. So the screens are, are both brighter and also and, the, and the unit just, goes for a lot longer. Right, right. I've heard like 20 hours or something at the lowest light settings. Wow, that's, that's so, really I mean, you're talking a huge amount of time. Yeah. Jeff, 20 minutes, 20 hours? It, it, it's definitely a lot longer. Yeah, I mean, right. obviously it depends on the, the battery setting and, and probably to a certain extent what game you're playing. But, yeah. Well, very longer. cool. Very good. Well, Brad, yes. thanks for coming by and Absolutely. showing this off. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, right now, GDC is happening down in uh, San Jose, and we have a whole team of people down here, and here's uh, a little clip of uh, what they're doing and what they're seeing. I'm here outside the San Jose Convention Center, the site of GDC 2006. And GDC stands for the Game Developers Conference. Um, and if you go inside, you'll notice it's a little bit like something called E3. The difference is that it's a little more skewed towards game development. We're about to go inside and check out what exactly is being shown on the show floor. It's not all just tools. There are some games, and there are some pretty exciting games. So let's go check it out. One of the hottest things being shown at GDC this year is the PlayStation 3. Now, there aren't any games here on the show floor, but they are showing some pretty impressive technology demos. What's the technology behind the PlayStation 3? Let's go find out. Hey, I'm here with Erwin. He's a physics developer for Sony, and he's showing us what's being shown of the PS3 here at GDC. So, Erwin, uh, can you just let me know what it is that you're showing right now? Yeah, sure. So, basically, um, there is a um, physics simulation running on the um, cell uh, PlayStation 3. The next generation, basically, is um, heavily using parallel processors. So, basically, if you look here, the cloth simulation is running on one uh, processor, but even this processor is not even fully utilized in this demo. And then there is um, the water simulation is running on completely a different uh, processor, which is part of the cells. All right, so, so are people developing on these kits right now? Yes, uh, there is uh, approximately like 14,000 kits already shipped uh, worldwide, yeah. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, Erwin. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right, so we're here at the Nintendo booth. I know what everyone wants to see. You want to see the revolution, right? All right. Ready? Here it is. Okay, I'm kind of bummed too. All right, it's not playable. I can't even touch it. I can sort of sit here and drool on the glass, but that's about it. So that's all you get for your revolution out of GDC, but I'm sure we'll see a little bit more of it at E3. Okay, so that wasn't as much revolution as we would have liked to have seen. But what the Nintendo booth is full of is DS lights. I mean, it is full of DS lights. Check it out. The games that we've got showing here at the Nintendo booth, Tetris DS, Metroid Prime Hunters, 
We have a new game called Magnetica that we haven't seen very much of before. We also have Brain Age, which is coming out in the States soon. And we also have the new Super Mario Brothers. So let's go see what the new Super Mario Brothers looks like. So what we have right here is the new Super Mario Brothers. Um, as you're finding out, just looking at the brief intro we've got going on, is that it's the same old story. Mario, Peach, Bowser. Oh, she's kidnapped again. Why can't Peach stop getting in trouble? And if you look, we have three modes in this game. There's the single player campaign, there's the Mario versus Luigi, and there are mini games. So, so let's check out what the single player campaign looks like. This looks a little bit like the like this layout for Super Mario Brothers 3. You're going to go from world to world. In the first world, if you go into the first world, it's going to look a lot like the first world in the first Super Mario Brothers game. Oh, check this out. Big mushroom. Big mushroom. Now this is fun. Basically, you get a big mushroom and Mario just goes crazy, causing havoc, re tearing out pipes, destroying everything in his path. This is actually pretty fun. I got a chance to play a little bit of this and I was definitely having a good time as Big Big Mario. All right, we're about to leave the Nintendo booth, but we didn't want to leave without leaving you guys with a little something extra. So your friend and mine, Ricardo Torres, hooked us up with some free swag to give away on the spot. So hopefully you guys will be getting it. These are Brain Age t-shirts, and I don't know how many we have, but hopefully we're going to have a bunch to give away to you guys. So, hope you enjoy them. So that wraps up our GDC Day 1 coverage. Stick around to the site, we'll have more on Day 2, hopefully looking at that right now, and Day 3 for Friday. If you want to find out any more about GDC, come back to GameSpot.com. I'm Carrie Guskos, back to you Rich. Thank you, Carrie. She gets to do all the fun stuff. She gets to go down to San Jose. She gets to stand next to the Revolution. She gets to play the Rubber Duck game. And she gets a Brain Age t-shirt. No, they get the Brain Age t-shirt. Oh, they get the Brain yes. Age t-shirt. Welcome to the set, Bob Coleco. Thanks for having me again, Rich. No problem. Anytime. We have to say GameSpot complete, or I'm sorry, GameSpot paid subscribers. The, our favorite part of every show is talking to you in the chat room. And of course, everyone can now send in your questions. Everyone registered members, whether you pay or whether you do not pay, use the form. Send them in. Ryan Davis will send us. Send them right to us, and pay subscribers will win a Brain Age t-shirt later. I don't get like one? Like three of them will. And copies do, of the game Brain Age. Do, do you get Brain Age t-shirts? No, dude. Oh. We give them to the people. All right. We all get right. this awesome job. They get the t-shirt. Oh, okay. That's all the right. trade we make here. I see. Bob, you That's brought right. with you Metroid Prime Hunters, correct? Yes. Got it right here. How is it? It's great. Yeah? It's an awesome game. Uh, it, the, for, it's kind of strange. For a Metroid game, you think a great single-player adventure. Mm -hmm. They tried to do some multiplayer action on the recent GameCube one. That's right. It, it was okay, but the multiplayer here is really great, and you get to play online. You can play with four people. they got all these modes. It's great stuff. Well, you don't get to play online today. You only get to show us a single-player. Yeah, player. I've got us booted right into a single-player uh, cool. section. Cool. Hop, hop right in. Tell okay. us what we're looking at right here. So right here, uh, this is what you see when uh, you're, you're jumping to a planet. Mm -hmm. And this is how you dial in uh, which planet you want to you want to jump into. Use the stylus, I'm and guessing. And use the stylus, and somehow I think uh, this froze up on us while we were oh, awesome. waiting. Well, uh, while Ryan well, Davis fires up some questions, we'll we'll get that game rebooted for us. No problem. Sure, we'll do that. Live TV, you understand how this? Yeah. Ryan Davis, you have any questions? Yeah, people want to know about the quality of the voice chat. How does that uh, how does that work out? How does it sound? There's voice chat in this game. There is voice chat in this game, and. Um, the the interesting thing is um, you can only you can only do the voice chat mm -hmm. uh, if you get online and you join a friends game. Okay. If you join up with your rivals, you can't access the voice chat. But otherwise, when you're in the lobby and you're selecting your modes, mm -hmm. uh, you can you can go right into uh, to voice chat. You just hold down X and you start talking to each other. Hey, Rich, you suck. I'm I do. Gonna shoot I'm you no right good ahead. at first You will. I'm yeah, not and, good uh, at first person shooters. And and that's how that works. Um, it comes out, it comes through pretty clear. It's about the same as you know if you played Xbox Live. Mm -hmm. um, Except you can't talk while you're actually playing. Uh, no, you can't talk <laughs> in the game. So and so th that limits the value like a little bit, but mm -hmm. uh, you know it, it works out. That's a pimp and stylus you got there, by the way. Yeah, I, I just found this on the on the desk over I here. I think it's Brian's. Okay, well, All I'm right. stealing from you for a while. All right, cool. So now it's not frozen. What do you do? Now uh, you just you're just gonna dial in here. Which planet? Like, let's just pick this one. Okay. Let's just go, and we're gonna land our ship, and then we warp to this uh, the space station at ludicrous speed. It, obviously. And then it shows your. We've gone plaid. Yeah, we've gone to plaid, and we're just going to land at this outpost, and it's going to show your your typical Metroid landing sequence. So the story is there a story to the single player? Yes, uh, you're in search of the the source of these mysterious messages that have come out of this uh, this system called the Olympic Sector. Cool. And uh, there's some 
kind of great unknown power that's emanating from here, and you have to you have to go track down some artifacts called the Octoliths. Oh. Put them all together, and uh, then you can. Figure are there out any the within secret. sight right here? You just want to pick up a couple Octoliths for us right now? Or? Yeah, I'll just do that in two minutes. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lot more of the single player game than that. And, Obviously. Uh, yeah, but um, a as you can tell from. Uh, you know, it's got it's got a nice looking style here. Uh, it, Graphics you know, really, are great. Yeah, it, it really looks like a great game, and um, I'm just aiming with the stylus, just dragging across the the bottom screen like this. Now, you, like many members of the Gamespot staff, are left-handed. Yes. Do you have any problems playing this game? No, because uh, they've thoughtfully included uh, nice reverse options. Whether you want to play with the stylus or you want to play with the D-pad and the mm -hmm. and the face buttons to aim. Um, you can you can do that left-handed either way. Now, does it does it feel like a first-person shooter since you get to aim and move like that? Or yeah, the the interesting thing is that this actually feels more like a first-person shooter than even uh, the Metroid Prime games on the GameCube because you've got so much precision over the aiming here. I'm I'm just like this is where I'm pointing. Mm -hmm. This is where I'm shooting. I'm shooting these these creatures here. Cool. Um, they look like Metroids, but they're not. They're not. They're not. Why they're you gotta not. ruin things? Oh. Uh, now I'm gonna just suck in all those power ups, just like uh, just like in the Metroid games, and uh, that's how it goes. You explore these little uh, space stations and planets, mm -hmm. and uh, you can you can unlock uh, different different guns, find different guns. You'll mm -hmm. find your missile power ups and your energy tank power ups, and you fight bosses. They're bounty you hunters. You turn into a little ball and you jump all over the place. Uh, yeah. And... Well, as soon as I take out this turret here, that's uh, bothering me. Ryan Davis, more questions, please? Sure. Uh, Mika, Judo Man, and Mark all want to know how long the single-player campaign in Metroid Prime Hunters is. Well, depending on how clever you are at, at getting through the puzzles or finding your, your way around, you can get through there in, in around, if you're good, maybe six, seven hours. You know, most people maybe closer to ten or something. But uh, you can see here, you get your typical uh, morph ball maze. Oh, you got to do a little grenade jump. Yeah, you get to do a little grenade Bomb jump. It's, it's hard on, this is not my DS. <laughs> yeah, I'm like staring at the TV or, you know. You want to play that on that DS Lite, don't you? Yeah, you know, I'm going to use that as my excuse. You know, that screen's brighter. Ryan Davis, you know, and one, one last question, please. Uh, they want to know about the different controls. Obviously, you can control it with a stylus, but there's uh, other methods that you can use. How do those work? Right, okay, so the other alternative mes method to using the, the stylus is to switch. Um, you use the D-pad and the face buttons I gotcha. to, to move around and aim. And you can switch. Whoa, I'm just getting shot by something in here. Mm -hmm. um, you can use the D-pad to... Uh, to move around and the face buttons to aim, or reverse it if you like doing the left-handed business here. Cool. So, like weird people like you and Jeff and Tim and no, you know, I actually I, I use a stylus left-handed, but mm -hmm. uh, the, the standard mode, I, I I keep getting frozen in here. Um, this the standard mode, I, I do it right-handed. Oh, okay. You know. Cool. Got, All right. Well, thank you, Bob. Anyway. Okay. Nice having you on here. Thanks, Thanks for having forward. me. Yeah, no problem. Bob's full reviews on the site. But right now, there's still more coming from GDC. Last night, they had a big award ceremony. It was kind of it was like two hours long or so. And we condensed it into a couple of minutes. Check it out. Thanks again, everyone. Um, I'm thrilled to be here this evening to present the Choice Awards along with our IGDA partner in crime, Jason De La Roca. This is, yeah, Jason. <laughs> this is our sixth year bringing you the Choice Awards, and what a year it's been. And the IGF Seamus McNally Grand Prize Game of the Year winner is... Darwinia. About four years ago, after uh, we'd had a, some success with Uplink, the four of us, Uplink, yeah, the four of us were still just friends from uh, university and we didn't know. <laughs> that, was, that was a good shot. <laughs> Starting a war now. Um, we didn't know whether we should start a, a real games company or whether we should just go and find real jobs. Uh, we decided to give Darwinia a go. Now, we didn't take any money from publishers because we didn't want any publishers up our game. And now let's get down to our final award of the year. The best game award. Animal Crossing Wild World. God of War. Guitar Hero. 
Shadow of the Colossus. The movies. Game of the Year. And the best game of 2005 is Shadow of the Colossus from Sony Computer Entertainment. Very cool stuff. You can find more of our coverage of GDC right on the front page of GameSpot.com, or you can go to GameSpot.com slash events slash GDC 2006. But right now, I've got Greg Sabin here. Greg, how you doing? Doing well. And you are here to give us a little uh, taste, or should I say an additional <laughs> taste, Indeed. of uh, The Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. Yes. Uh, this, this is probably the biggest single game to come out this year. Uh, this year? Wow. So that's the <laughs> amount of time that I've been spending playing this game, showing through, because uh, I've been doing very little except play this game. I, I still feel like there's so much more that I have to get to uh, before, you know, before I can reach a verdict. But Now, this is, this is the follow-up to Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, yeah. which was a, a much-loved uh, RPG, both for the PC and the Xbox, the original Xbox. Right. And uh, it was a game that was very much lauded for its open-endedness. Right, and and this uh, this sequel follows suit. It lets you play pretty much however you want, um, except I, I think one of the big differences is is that all these different ways that you could play this game, they're all uh, everything I've been doing in this game has just been a lot of fun. So it's not just this big immersive experience type of thing. It's also just like the combat's intense, the stealth is cool, the the Interaction with all the different characters is, is interesting. The quests are interesting. So I'm about to get into a big, dirty pit fight. Awesome. Uh, my, my character is... Oh, uh, your character an, looks rude. My character is an orc thug. Uh, wielding, so wait, a thug uh, is an actual class in this? A thug is a class that I created because you <laughs> get to create your own class. Oh, really? Um, That's it. That is awesome. Yeah, you, you choose the different skills you want to be good at and, and so on. And um, you, you basically take it from there and create a character so like the one you want to play. So what is keeping you from getting into this pit fight right now? Um, is, is just... You know, I think it might... Be, there, there we go. It was. It, it was. I, I can't hear the audio, but hopefully you all can. Um, but there was a bit of announcing. So place your bet. Who's going to win between me and this? This, uh, this nice young lady yes. here in this in her fun she, helmet. She is fast. I am slow and powerful. Uh, now um, while you while you fight to death here in this in this crazy arena, I'm going to throw some questions at you. Yeah, Gary, go for it. Gary Moore wants to know. Uh, he's heard that some people have been complaining about load times, frame rate, and freezing. Have you encountered any of these problems? Um, uh, well, not as such. Which version is he referring to? The 360 one? I assume um, so. He does not. He does you, not. You know, I've had it, it in the 30 odd hours I've played. It's frozen on me twice, actually, and I I don't know whether that's the game or the Xbox or whatever. Um, it's it really hasn't bothered me. Um, the the loading times are relatively short. I guess Bethesda has issued some kind of announcement that like it loads faster if you have a hard drive and you could actually like defrag your hard drive or something like that if you if Have you been funny. playing the PC version at all or um, I I've strictly? I've played I need to play the PC version a lot more. Um, I haven't gotten Bye bye. See ya. Hey. Um, <laughs> for the business. Yes. Yes. This axe is is the business. I'll now this is this is just right like quick. the arena mode. This is like a, kind of an aside. Yeah, in this the game. is totally just a sub quest. It, it's just something that you can choose to do. Um, I'll show you the world map right quick. I'm right here, which is just the arena in the uh, Imperial City. Uh, the Imperial City itself is huge, and the world itself so is that, that, way, that, that way, way bigger. Back there in the middle, that was just the one city, and then you're seeing more and more land. So this, yeah, the world itself is huge. We're not just talking about it's, like a really long grinding quest, but yeah, know, it's a big environment. The, the world is gigantic, but more importantly, it's detailed. Like it's 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 rich with little details. It's just really cool to be able to walk up to a table and see, you know calipers and a hand scythe and you know whatever a candelabra and all this crap and you can pick it up and get your crazy physics and throw stuff and watch guys practicing and you could take your axe and decide you don't like this guy and you know what hit him and start fighting just start a start a freaking brawl um, <laughs> cuz cuz I'm a thug and I'm suicidal oh, yeah, you're gonna get and that. now I'm being arrested um, right before I was about to be killed so um, Let's see, should I go to jail, resist arrest? I should probably go to, let's see, I'm going to pay the gold. Um, he says, too bad, I was hoping you'd resist arrest, but trust me, he says that all the time. Um, 
So, anyway, I just narrowly escaped being murdered by a gang of ruthless arena fighters because I got arrested for hitting a fellow orc in the back of the head with my battle axe. Uh, and those types of experiences can be yours <laughs> in this game. Being able to say things like fellow orc, yes. for example. And uh, actually, there are a lot of really cool details like that. Like, you'll be fighting a guy, and he'll, be, he'll say, like, take that, orc. They'll actually acknowledge the type of character you are. Uh, there, there are a whole bunch of different races you can choose from. The, the orc just happens to be well-suited to thug-like behavior. Now, um, now Johnny Clark uh, from Allentown, Pennsylvania, along with a lot of other people, are asking, yeah. when's the review coming for this? The game's the, already out. It came out earlier this week. Yeah, so, I mean, if you're looking for uh, validation to go get this game, consider this it. I'm, I'm really enjoying this game so far. It's just a question of how much. You know, it, it's, it's a really, it's one of the most impressive just even based on what I've played of it so far, it's one of the more impressive RPGs I've played in a very long time. When's the review coming out? Uh, when it's when it's ready? Um, I, I'd love to tell you that it's going to go up tomorrow, but um, considering I've poured this much time into this game already and I still haven't beat uh, the main quest, I, I think I'm going to need the weekend. But early next week. Uh, so it's, it's a big latest. game. We don't want yes. to shortchange it. You've been no. playing this game a whole bunch. In fact, <coughs> just this past Monday, Greg here played the game nonstop for 12 hours in our first GameSpot gameplay marathon. Right. Which, you know, unprecedented. We were live. Greg, you were there giving commentary for it. It was a, a really awesome thing. So if you missed it, here is all 12 hours right now. Uh, just kidding. We're not about to show you an entire 12-hour broadcast again. The whole point was you had to tune in to see the whole thing live. So the next time we do one of these crazy uh, live gameplay marathons, uh, remember to tune in because it turned out to be something really cool and, and we really appreciate all the great response that we got. And, and I'm amazed that some number of you actually stayed there right along with me uh, for the entire 12 hour stretch from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Now, I wanted to clear up a couple of misconceptions about what actually happened. The first thing is the number of bathroom breaks I took is one. The second thing is the fire alarm at the end, that was, that was real, I swear to God. The fire alarm actually went off after 6 a.m. The building did not burn down. It was actually just a scheduled test. They figured that no one was going to be in the building, and, and I guess I didn't get the memo. Um, anyway, without further ado, uh, we aren't going to show you the entire 12-hour stretch, but we'll show you an entire hour. Check it out. This week's On the Spot is brought to you by Wendy's Spicy Chicken Sandwich. Do what tastes right. We sure are pranksters, aren't we, Brian Eckberg? I'm tired. Yeah, we said, oh, we're going to show you the whole 12 hours. We didn't. I feel like I need to shave. We're going to show you a whole hour. We didn't. Instead, there it is, condensed, raw, yeah. you know, well, not raw, very, you know, pure. There it is. Condensed. That was an hour and 30 Gritty. seconds. Gritty. Straight off, exactly. off the street. Now, Matt, Straight off the street. Imagine doing that for 12 hours, living the orc thug life. That's a lot of thugging. Yes. The thug orc life, Jeff, which would you orc, say I should go I, I'd say orc thug life. Orc thug There's life. There's a lot of orc thug passion that you find in that game. You can, <laughs> you can drink it. and um, For real. Yeah. Is there anything like Romulan ale? It's one part <laughs> mead, one part blood. Yeah. Um, Anyways, enough with you guys. We'll be back with you for Loco Roco in a little bit. Brian Eckberg, how are you doing, sir? Hey, man. How you you doing? brought a great, amazing game with you that I might just have to import after seeing one gameplay. Before. Yeah, this is an interesting game. Of uh, of course, we're talking about Ice Shield Twenty One. Okay. Which is a Japanese sort of anime-influenced football game. Awesome. American as if, as football. As if the American name didn't football. give it away. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ice Shield 21. What are we talking about? L- Ladanian Tomlinson? Right, we uh, are, yeah. No, no. But, uh, yeah, so this is a Japanese, you know, the it's a Japanese look at American football mm-hmm. on the DS. And it's got some really cool game mechanics. If you if you can see right now, my guy here, the actual title character, see his green eye shield, mm-hmm. is running with the ball after a kickoff. What you see is as he's approached by uh, guys who want to tackle him, you'll see these little holes up here, and you have to tap those holes okay. with with the stylus. In fact, all of the controls in this game are it's completely controlled with the touch screen and the stylus. Awesome. And so now he's he's uh oh I missed so he's going to get tackled. So you can see how they move around a little bit, and and you have an energy gauge, and the more you the longer you run, the more it goes down, and mm-hmm. once it runs down completely, you're tackled. That was an awesome return. That was a good a solid return. So now we're here at the uh, the play call screen, and mm-hmm. you've got your standard run, pass, punt, and whatever else you want to do. Okay. I'm going to choose a, a, a pass play just so we can get a good look at it. And there's no, like, out route or anything. You just choose pass play, choose the receiver you want to throw to, and basically it's the, the play goes into motion. The, the thing about this game is that it's very hands-off. You're really only controlling sort of the running and the catching of the ball. The ball there, oh, I missed oh, it. Oh, you missed it. Yeah, so you saw how the ball flew through the air. Yeah. You tap the ball, and the guy catches it. Cool. Now, there's a little bit of, um, you're rewarded for tapping really accurately. So if you tap directly, I'll try it again. Mm-hmm. If you tap directly in the center of the ball, you actually can run after the catch. Otherwise, you're tackled immediately. Okay. So it, it really rewards you to be... Um, to try some, you know, to try to be as accurate as you can. But yeah, the game is really hands off. You're really just trying to be as accurate as possible. Let's see if I can catch it this time. Man, oh, I missed it again. That. I thought I had you it. You had that. Yeah, it's a joke. This must be the Super Bowl. I want to see this show. This is yeah. based on a, a, on a cartoon. Yeah, absolutely, this is based on an anime and uh, a manga series, I guess. And um, I don't know if it's out in America. I'll try I'll to go run to Ice Shield, dude. Go to Ice Shield. Got to use it. Now, yeah. why does he wear the Ice Shield? Well, bec- it's a long story. I had to look <laughs> this up on Wikipedia because I had no idea. <laughs> okay. But um, this guy supposedly is a really great runner, <laughs> except not, for not here. Oh, no. <laughs> But anyway, he, he has to wear the eye shield because he doesn't want to be recognized on the field because he's afraid that every other character, mm-hmm. every other school in his local area is going to recruit him, and he doesn't want that. No, who wants he, to be recruited? No, nah, he, he's loyal. You know what? It's fourth down. I'm going for it. You got to go for it. Yeah, so um, so he wears the eye shield to protect protect his identity on the field. Obviously. So, you one, keep going. Yeah, one more, one more pass play here. Maybe I can catch the ball, actually. Ryan Davis, get us some questions, will you? I've got uh, questions. Uh, Xavier Matos wants to know: Is this uh, just a goofy take on football, or are there types of ple- or, or is there a typical plethora of modes akin to most football games? There is, is there any lasting long value? Well, there's a story mode, but the problem is it's so in Japanese that I didn't understand it at all. Mm-hmm. Basically, what all I was doing during the story mode is sort of walking around the empty classrooms and bumping into fellow students, which is kind of how I spent really my <laughs> high school career. But oh, the sneak! Yeah. So, yeah, so you see there, I found a hole. He's going to push some guys away. But, yeah, no, the story, there is a story mode, but it's sort of like it's kind of ha- figure, hard to figure out what's going on because mm-hmm. um, it's all in Japanese text. Mo- mostly what, what interested me and what interested us was the, the really different take on football here. When you're on defense, um, you have to tackle people who have the ball, and you basically do that by scribbling the screen as hard as you can. Cool. So it's really fun, really, really active, and... It's, it's definitely not as, you know, um, you don't have as much control as you would in, say, Madden DS or something like that or any mm-hmm. other Madden game, but it's definitely got some, some cool things that you definitely haven't seen in a football game before. Does the game contain any run-stuffing gang tackles? Actually, you may see one right here if I miss. <laughs> actually, you know, it's funny. Oh. There's, there's actually a lineman mini game. Whereas, you, again, you scribble the screen and the line will either expand or contract to open up holes in the, in the line for you to run through, depending on how fast you scribble on the screen. And then if the ball is dropped and there's a fumble, you have to tap on the ball to, get, to, get reco- you know, to recover the ball. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's completely touchscreen controlled and it's just fun. I mean, you don't have to worry about, if you don't know anything about football, you, you don't want to call plays, you just call run play. And then you just, if you're good with a stylus, you'll have a lot of success. It's pretty cool. One last question, Ryan Davis. Everyone wants to know if this is coming to the U.S. If we know anything That's about that, my tax. question. No. Yeah, I, no. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. People want to know if they like if 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 uh, they like football and they like anime. Is this the thing for them? Is this Duh. Is this worth? Is this worth sure. the if you like video games on a DS, yeah. if you like anime, you like football. Yeah. Yeah. At, at, the, ver- that one. at the very least, the 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 optimist in me hopes that maybe. 
the Madden team looks at this and pulls something for the DS version of Madden in the future. Or there's some cartoon station out there that sees this and says, I'm bringing iShield 21 to the States. Shonen and Jump. Then, and then this game will come out in like a year or so. Absolutely. That'd be in great. English. That'd be great. We'd love to see it. Cool. Well, thank you, Brian Eckberg. Before you go, yeah. there's a feature going up on the sports part of this fine site that we work for. What's it all about? Well, everybody knows uh, March Madness is in full swing. We're yep. doing the, the Sweet 16 games start today, I believe. Yes. And we are doing a Sweet 16 feature. What we did is uh, we all got together and talked about some of the uh, some of the biggest basketball game innovations that have happened over the years, and we decided we put them in a bracket and let readers vote for them and decide which have had the been which has been the biggest basketball innovation over the years. So uh, the feature will be running over the next couple of weeks. It'll go live later today. So give it a look and uh, definitely vote and let me know what you think. And if, I think we put together a uh, little selection show. We sure did. As with any uh, March Madness, you need the selection show. We put this together yesterday. Hope you enjoy it. Hello and welcome to the GameSpot Sports Sweet 16 Selection Show. Over the past few weeks, the massive GameSpot Sports staff has spent literally hours poring over every basketball game in history to bring you our picks for 16 of the most important hoops innovations of all time. Actually, Brian, wasn't it just you and Bob talking at your desk for like 15 minutes last week? Shut up, Rich. You shut up, Brian. We've organized the picks across four brackets, presentation, fundamentals, control, and extras. And even though many of these innovations aren't unique to basketball games, they've all played a part in turning this into this. Breaking the wall. So without further ado, let's get to our picks. We'll start off with a bracket that Bob Kaliko has the most trouble with in his real life game, Fundamentals. The top seed goes to 3D Graphics. The second seed, and sort of a controversial choice here, online play. It seems the voting committee cares more about looks than longevity, Rich. Which is exactly how I feel about your mom, Brian. Did Bob write that? Dude! The third seed goes to Franchise Modes, while year-round recruiting gets the fourth and final seed. Tough choices all. Yeah, over in the presentation bracket, though, we've got real NBA players and teams entrenched in the one seed. Another controversial pick, licensed cover athletes, takes the number two spot. Wait, aren't... Aren't those the same thing? Well, only when you think about it. The third seed goes to the instant replay feature, while NBA 06's story mode comes in at number four, knocking off Turney Hopeful licensed music in the process. Ow, you know what? Tough break for hip-hop. Mm. Of course, if it was up to me, we'd have nothing but George Strait songs in basketball games. Moving on to the controls bracket, a very strong number one seed, Analog Control. This one's got to be an early favorite in the tournament. I don't know, Rich. The separate buttons for dunk and shoot at number two is an underrated pick by some experts. And with the shot stick and freestyle controls rounding out things at three and four, this could be the most wide open bracket in the tourney. Finally, we come to the extras bracket, which is being led off by Create a Player. Brian, I spent last night making my all Middlebury team. <laughs> they play basketball in Vermont? Hey, if you can be D3 hockey national champs eight out of 12 years, anything is possible. Moving on, we've got interactive load screen slotted in at number two, but because it was basically the only thing enjoyable about NBA Live 06, it arguably could have gotten top seeding. Hey, Ben, at number three, we've got play-by-play -play commentary, and that means we've got two innovations on the bubble, Rich. That's right, Brian. Two hoops innovations looking to fight for that final tournament spot. It's between sweat effects in next-gen games and C-list celebrity guest appearances. Brian, I'll make a prediction here. The selection committee is going with Flavor Flav. Okay, it's all down to Sweat versus David Arquette. Tough choice, Rich. Well, let's not keep the people waiting. Perspiration gets the four seed. And look at those sweaty fools going nuts. It's party time for them, Brian, but too bad for the Arquette fans. They're clearly heartbroken. Go cry and you're ready to rumble, DVDs, hippies. So there you go, folks, our 16 innovations that changed hoops games. Which one will reign supreme? That's up to you to decide, so get to voting. Did you see 3,000 Miles of Graceland? That was, that was oh, terrible. Yeah, pretty cool. Elvis. Oh yeah, in your face, C-list celebrities. Take Whatever, it. man. Take I'm not it. into this whole thing anymore, man. Next year, though. Next year? It's over. Next year, you. number one? We are the Duke of C-list celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Gershman, hey, how you doing? I'm doing all right. You've got... It's nice over here. It's, isn't it nice over here? Yeah. Present on the standing set? Yeah. Far, far away from Rich? It's cool. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> We have a game here which we're all super excited about, which yes. we first saw at TGS. Yes, TGS last year. Saw it at TGS last year, and it captivated us so much that we smuggled it back into the U.S. Yeah, and but uh, you know it was a, like a game share demo, so the minute the power goes out on the PSP, it's gone. You managed to actually keep that thing alive for like a week. Yeah, right? I had it on there for like two weeks, and I had this other crazy ukulele game on there for like a month. Oh, that thing was awesome. That thing was awesome. Um, but unfortunately, but we couldn't show it to the people. Right, yeah, but technology has progressed, and now we're able to show it to you again uh, because they're actually showing the game off in similar fashion at GDC. What's the name of the game? This Jeff? game is 
Loco Roco. Loco Roco. Uh, and for those of you who don't habla espanol, Loco Roco is Spanish for... Crazy Roco. Crazy Roco. <laughs> <laughs> now, isn't it true this game is called Roco Roco in Japan? Well, you see up there, the, the little symbols up there up top, um, the, the, the symbols are the same because of the whole L and R thing right. in the Japanese language. But, you know, this is, they are calling it Loco Roco uh, there as well. Um, so let's jump right into the demo. Some people are saying, and by some people I mean uh, me, I guess, uh, it, it's kind of like a 2D Katamari Damashi. It's because we don't have enough ball rolling on the PSP. Dude, apparently. totally. Need more ball rolling games. Yes. Oh, look at your guy. He's excited. So this guy's happy. <laughs> He's like, hey, man, whatever. This game just makes me laugh. Just wa it, You don't even have to do anything. He just sits there and smiles. Yeah. And it's awesome. So basically your only means of control are the uh, two... Uh, triggers, the, the two triggers on the PSP, and uh, you're basically tilting the screen back and forth, and if you hit them both, he'll jump. So I'm picking up these little uh, flower bulbs here, and that'll make me get bigger, um, and that is pretty much the goal, is to get to the end of the level, and being bigger uh, lets you sustain more hits, and uh, there are certain uh, things that are like weight controlled, so if you're, you're over the, the 10 mark, you'll be able to open up a gate and, and stuff like that. So, but you can also then, you, you, you aren't always just this one big glob, right? Right. So if I, if, when I get up here a little ways, there's going to be a situation where oh, I'm going to be too big to, to make it through. No. Yes. No. Big. Yes. You're crazy. I know. I know. <laughs> what are you going to do about that, Jeff? Well, That's I, tough. When we get over here, we're going to find I'm out. I'm getting dizzy as all, as all <laughs> can, you, can get. get. Can any point, can you just spin it all the way upside down? Or? No, please, no. This is, no. This is the, the limit of the tilt. So we're just going to break it. Okay, here we go. Here's what happens when you hit the circle button. Oh, oh geez. You've multiplied. Into, into yeah, so you can split apart, and then you can, and then I can reform. So uh, you can basically you can get over here, and oh, I got to straighten out. You form like Voltron, and that's right. Roll goes the head. Heat a head. Yeah. Let's just ahead. say <laughs> we form like Voltron. Heat a head. Uh, so we're down here, and see, this is where it comes in handy. So you've got those tight little caps. Like I'm just, I'm, you know, too many nachos. I can't fit through that hole. Oh. But boom. These guys got no problem. Those guys they're just, like, and they're partying. Right they're like, now. yeah, dude, let's do it. Fun. So uh, and then we get them back together and we proceed. So yeah, it's got like a, it's a real kind of obstacle course thing going on, and there's a lot of little puzzles and stuff like that along the way. Now this is just a little single level demo, correct? Yes, it that, is. That we are picking up. We got this at GDC. Yeah, and they showed it at GDC because they announced that it's going to be coming to the U.S. this All summer. Right. Did they yeah. give it? An, so it's the summer. Did they give it a more specific release? No, date? they they said summer worldwide. That's all they said. So that presumably means that Europe will get it around the same time as well. Along with Ice Shield 21. Right? Along with yes, <laughs> yes of course, right. Ice Shield 21, <laughs> uh, day and date. Same, yeah. Same. Oh, I, oh! See, now the wind blew you apart this time. Yeah. So you know the little Sonic the Hedgehog kind of automatic out. thing. Yeah. These dudes are not happy with this. <laughs> They're split up. They don't know what's going on. Everything is loco. Yeah. It, it, these rocos are loco. Hey, Jeff, do you face enemies on any of the levels? Well, you see these little spiky guys here. They will. They will kind of move around and, and cause trouble. There were some little owl dudes back there that uh, that I took out. Um, so there's, there's obstacles that you have to avoid, and, and that, that seems to be kind of the enemy. Of course, this is just a one-level demo, so you know who knows what the, the final game will, will have in there. So here's a little troublesome part here. That guy's going to blow me up there into those spikes if I'm not careful, but i got to get over there. Go, go, go. Nice. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Now they're all great okay. and sad. Yeah, but I picked them up. We're okay. It's, like, it's real Sonic the Hedgehog style where the, the rings come out and you pick them up. Stuff Any like more that. questions, Ryan Davis? Uh, people, I mean, uh, we got all sorts of questions asking about the specifics of the release date, multiplayer, online, game sharing. Give us some names behind these questions. Well, it's, it's all, it's, okay. It's all Jay Barry. wants to know. Perfect. See, now Jay, know, now Jay's heard his name on the show. There you go, Jay. Thanks for writing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's, the, what's the deal with these plants that are just seem to be kind of spawning up There are here? just like little hidden plants that you'll get to. And see, now I've, 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 oh, I'm huge. 10, so now I'm a big dude. He's like Kirsty Alley. Exactly. <laughs> Has this game come out in Japan No, it's already? not out in Japan yet either. So it's okay. going to be a truly worldwide release for this game because it'll be coming out over there around the same time. And that, it's really exciting. This is a game that, you know, seeing it at TGS last year back in September, it was like, man, that game's awesome. Hopefully they'll bring it over, but not hold my breath. See, I need 15 to, oh, to get this open. There, but see, I, I missed a few along the way, so I can't get this door open, um, no which would open up an alternate path to the to the exit. So here we go. We got to split split up the team one more time here. You guys ready for it? No, no, no! Ah! I like the little thunder in the background, like you're turning into a vampire or something. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh no! Shazoom! <laughs> <laughs> well, well, cool. Very, very, very cool. awesome. Yeah. 
I don't know what to say else to say about this. I'm just in awe. This game's got just an awesome art yeah, style. Yeah, the, the visual style is it, it's really it's really impressive. You know, it's it's got the the 2D 3D thing down. Uh, Dan oh, from, from New Baltimore wants to know: Is there any kind of a storyline in this, or is it just you are crazy, Roko? I've got a question for: Is there a, there's a New Baltimore? Apparently. When do they make that? <laughs> uh, I, presumably, hopefully, there'll be some kind of story, but uh, right now we don't know. It's just the demo. And see, this is the end of the level here. Uh, now there's a. I could have gotten as many as twenty mm. little dudes together, and then three of these little uh, hidden shadow dudes um, are apparently somewhere in the level. But since I didn't take those alternate paths, you know. Who the hell knows where they're at? Not me. Not you. That's no. for sure. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna keep this on for as long as we can. Yeah, basically we're gonna leave this plugged in until someone else needs to um, play PSP games and, on, on a TV. And then we're gonna say, no, you can't. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Very cool, Jeff. Thank you for showing us Loco Roco. This anytime, is awesome. Anytime, I, we are all looking forward to it. Anything else that we can get yeah, on this it's game? It's Loco Roco. You gotta roll the eyes. Roco. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Up next, we have a trailer for the next FIFA game for the Xbox 360. Is that right? I think yeah. so. Is it, I, don't, I, think I don't know what the name of it is. It's, it's World 2006, 2006 FIFA World, World, World Cup. Cup. 2000, the World Cup. You know, it's the event where everyone goes to play soccer and there's like millions of people watching uh, it. Soccer? What? It's like, is that it's like, like I shoot 21 except you can only kick the ball. It's like hockey right. on the grass. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That I get. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Check it out. And there it is, another world premiere trailer here on On The Spot. We get a lot of those, and they are all awesome. Every those guys time. had, like, the best hyper-color shirts yeah, was ever. Was that, did that really happen? Yeah. Or am I losing I, it? That no. blew me away. No, I, those can, are, where those can I get, does teams. EA have the, shirts like that? No, Because could this teams. change to, like, a Panama? Is it? No, <laughs> no. But, uh, yeah, World Cup, Brian, who are you picking? Uh, Ajax. <laughs> <laughs> That's the damn baby. They're, they're not, they're, oh, so you can pick the nation, not Oh, not, yeah. Go Team and Blue! T USA, Team USA actually just got stomped by Germany 4-1, and they're like, oh, we didn't have all of our starters. And, yeah, go USA, though. We'll root for you. Anyways, we're at the end of the show where we give away prizes, and we announce winners from last week, my favorite part of the show. I love it. Last week, we gave away, uh, I believe it was 18 total prizes. We gave away three copies of Mega Man Powered Up and three copies of, what was the other game, Ryan Davis? Do you remember? Uh, Ryan Davis. I don't know. Tetris no. DS. We gave away so many. It's Tetris DS, it's Tetris DS. And, DS and 12 yeah. standees for Star Wars Empire at War. And we have the winners here. The question for uh, Mega Man Pirate Up was which of the following bosses was not a real boss? The answer was D-Tricity Man. See, when I read that, I thought it was Tri-City me, Man. Me like too. the sporting good oh. story. Yeah. This is a local thing. Yeah. Like, Fremont, right? No. Yeah, yeah no. The Tri-City DJs? No. But anyways, the three people <laughs> who won that are Andre Reese of Ontario, Sean Moore of North Carolina, and Stephen... Matchuzak of Pennsylvania. Good job. And we gave away three copies of Tetris DS, and people said, which of the following letters cannot be created by a single Tetris block? The answer was the letter Y or option B. Maybe you can't. Someone say that name for me, please. Michael? Mikhail Hasselgren of Sweden. Chen Reed of Australia and Brian Gilmore of California reaching out across borders for that Tetris DS prize. Congratulations to all of you. And the last, pro the last question, Ryan Davis, you asked, did you remember what it was? 
Uh, no, I don't. The Death Star was blank operational. Oh, yes. Blank operational. The answer the was... The is C. Fully. C. Fully. And we have two fully whole screens of winners bro. here, so... Uh, I was going to say friggin' operational. Well, yeah, it, 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 yeah, I think uh, maybe like Porkins said that, <laughs> and then, then he cashed out. But the winners were uh, Christopher Jack of Florida, Matt Halbrook of Virginia, Lewis Green of the UK, uh, Michael Estrada of Texas, <laughs> Leo Blake of Utah, Rick Willand of Florida. The other winners were Matt... Mac Hawbaker, nice that's a great name. Yeah. Mac Hawbaker of Arizona, Maurice Matthews of California, James Woodsack of Ontario, Tom Aitken of British Columbia, Justin Harper of California, and the man who's facing Will Savage in a steel cage match next week, Henry Battle the Third of New York. <laughs> so oh, the third Henry Battle, Henry Battle yes. is definitely the worst of, of the three, <laughs> man. That one. The uh, first two Henry Battles. It cost a lot of lives. You know, the, yeah. A lot of lives. <laughs> This week we are giving away some great prizes. Let's, uh, we're giving away three copies of Capcom Classics Collection Remix for the PSP and three copies of Brain Age for the Nintendo DS. That's not even out yet. No. And uh, we'll throw it. You guys got some Brain Age t-shirts. That, we got these uh, that cool Brain Age t-shirts earlier. here. They say Green Matters on the front, Brain Age on the back. Nice. It's well, a medium. Mine is, at least. They, they won't fit us, so you get them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we got these to give away. Yeah. <laughs> GameSpot paid subscribers. The way you win a trivia competition here is you see this, this window with us. You see next to it, there's a thing for questions. And next to that, there's a trivia form. Click on the little drop-down menu, choose question one, and then click on the answer that you think uh, is right for the following question. You get it? Everyone did, got, did it right last week. Do it right again this week. We're proud of you. Question number one is... Rich says waiting for the graphic. Which of the following is not a Final Fight villain? A. Bread. B. Torrente. C. G. Oriver. Or D. Doug. Now, you pick the answer you think is right, hit submit, and uh, if you are one of the first three people to do right, you win yourselves a Capcom Classics Collection uh, remix for the PSP. Fellas, you want to do the next question? Sure, yeah. Do hit it. Me. Do it, totally. Do it, all right. I'm ready for it. This is for the brain age. You read it, I forgot how. There are blank miles of axons in the human brain. Is it A, 5, B, 20, C, 23, or D, Three million. What's an axon, Ryan Davis? Uh, it's uh, part of a neuron, I think. Yeah, it's Some like sort of brain little, meat thing. It's part of the brain sticks out. Yeah, we learned all kinds stuff. of stuff about the brain when we were looking up that trivia question. Do you See, know the answer to that one? Again, I would have guessed friggin'. <laughs> <laughs> there are friggin' miles of axons. And actually, you know, you're right. Yeah. Fully, yeah, you, you, there, there are miles. There are, there are, there are fully miles. There are fully miles. <laughs> Ryan and bro. Jeff, is there anything on the site that people should know about that they that they should be checking out? Uh, let's see. What do we got? Uh, Blazing Angel Xbox 360 review uh, running a little later today. If it's not up already, mm -hmm. uh, Metroid Prime Hunters review is up. Uh, we'll have video review for Blazing Angels in the morning, and uh, all that, and then some. All I'm kinds of all sorts of GDC stuff. You go to the GDC page, Gamespot.com/events/GDC2006 to catch all that. All sorts of crazy stuff coming out. Yeah, ahead. like for example, did you know the PS3 is going to be region free? No, I did not. Jeff. Crazy. Did you know that Metal <laughs> Slug is coming to the PSP? Like all six of them. What? It's a fact. What about awesome the Nintendo stuff. Go? What's that all about? I don't even know what the Nintendo Go is. That's not even there. That, that's, there's, there's a, a leaked shot or, or a uh, fake shot or who knows a, of some logo that says Nintendo Go. Go is Japanese for five. It's their fifth system. Hmm. Logo looks pretty good. And that's the first name other than Revolution that I haven't totally hated. So. What about I like, I like Revolution. Road. Well, that was for the last one. Yeah, that's too yeah. bad. Well, thank you, fellas. Great show having both of you on today. It was you know, nice, nice having you around. Anytime. Brian Eckberg, can we expect a preview by Shield 21 on the it's site? It's up right now, baby. Sweet. And the Sweet 16 feature. Just Later. go watch that video again. Try to spot Stanley in both, in both crowds. Oh, you yeah. ruined it. No, that's uh, funny when you see it. <laughs> I had to watch it three times. Yeah, so that's what we're pointing out to you. But uh, we, I'd like to thank Greg and Brad for coming by. All of the crew did a phenomenal job. And, of course, you for watching. We'll catch you next week right here on the spot. I love saying that. 3,000 miles of Great. Elvis era.